topic of our very first uh, do it uh, webinar for practitioners and others who are interested in uh, supporting uh, these young social entrepreneurs. Uh, the to our topic is how to rearrange the classrooms and we will uh, also be talking about other uh, special requirements. Uh, our guests here are uh, Roberto Dovic. He is from uh, Zagreb and uh, he has been a big part of Do It pilot activities. And um, uh, our second guest is uh, Christian uh, from uh, Biotechna Lab. He has been working as the head of mentors and also working with the artists in the lab. So uh, could you tell me a little bit and our audience a little bit more about yourself and what kind of work have you been doing within the Do It project and our entrepreneurs? Who is first? <laughs> I would say Roberto. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you, Antti. Um, as I said, as you said, I'm Roberto. I'm uh, working at the University of Zagreb, Faculty of Architecture, who is partner on the Do It uh, project, and we are uh, we are uh, working on pilot activities and. Uh, with the kids, but also with the facilitators. Uh, but I'm also uh, co-founder of uh, FabLab uh, in Zagreb, who is, let's say, uh, whose members are partner also uh, in this project and uh, participating on uh, do it activities from the position of making and uh, prototyping. So mainly I'm also teaching students how to use computers, how to use uh, new technologies and uh, this with a high uh, education with the students at the university. Uh, we also as a fab lab work with uh, uh, pupils in primary schools and students in secondary schools and try to uh, mix them together in different uh, workshops so do it uh, workshops give us uh, some kind of framework with a very specific topic in uh, social innovation and and the entrepreneurial education and uh, linked to makers uh, which is which was also very interesting for me personally and for our institution as a faculty of architecture i hope this is okay for the start yeah and okay. how about you christian thanks roberto thanks Antti, for inviting me my name is christian Tkalets. i'm from slovenia ljubljana um, i work at kersenkova institute where i'm head of mentors um, so my part of, uh, of, of well, uh, Kersenkova is uh, in pilot activities, also working with uh, facilitators and with, with kids. Um, but my, um, my work, especially to work with facilitators. So um, we started with, with the facilitate, facilitators training program, um, where we have now the fourth generation of them. Um, so now we're developing as well um, some more intensive um, intensive um, program for, for facilitators because at the moment we have program that lasts for around four months um, but in, in now in the autumn I think we have to develop also some something shorter um, for do it especially all, all right so our topic is um working with the teachers and rearranging classroom could you comment uh, what has been your largest challenges and lessons learned when you start from this uh, um, sometimes old-fashioned teaching where the students listen it's been also called the banking model of teaching to where the youth where they really start to learn by doing so what has been the challenges around this when you start to really change the teaching model yeah when we started at Kersniko Institute um, we didn't really had a lot of issues because it was all of a sudden it was a different um, and it was a different room it was not um, it was not school so even the kids started to act differently but we had a lot of challenges in school um, because first of all it's a formal education and everything is set for the formal education and not for non-formal what we do um, so the first thing was to 
just change the appearance of the classroom. So what we actually did, um, but that was after a couple of tries, of course, um, we found out that this works quite well. We just moved the tables on the on one side and everything um, that we had, and we sit it on, we sit on the floor. Um, the next thing was this was already a really huge thing for kids because all of a sudden they weren't thinking about okay I'm sitting in in the classroom behind the desk I have to listen and write down down stuff so all of, all of a sudden they, in the beginning they didn't know how to react on it um, after I mean at the same time but what we also thought about it that we should change the perspective of how they learn and how we give them knowledge so we don't want to be teachers who stand up on the higher level and teach them while they sit. So we also sit down on the floor. So we were all on the same level, um, which we found really, really, really important because um, all of a sudden you're part of them. Um, so you're not the one and only who knows everything, but you're part of them. Um, so they also get the, um, you, you give them chance um, to, to, to have their own voice um, and they got courage to tell you something, even if it's wrong. Uh, so what is your perspective on this, uh, Robert? You said that you had a background in uh, as an architect. So what are your experiences in arranging the classroom? Yeah, so so first intention was to bring uh, uh, kids to our fab lab. But uh, because we deal and we were chosen to work with uh, kids with the special needs, uh, we decide that uh, we will practice uh, in uh, on school premises. So in school, in classrooms, and uh, yes, same like uh, in Christian case, uh, we rearrange, uh, when we came there, we rearrange uh, tables and move them and organize in different way. We have uh, makers or prototyping corner on one side, some resources corner on other side. And we, because we work in the groups, uh, usually tables are, are organized uh, in the couples or and, and in the rows and columns. Uh, so we rearrange uh, some, some, some islands where kids were uh, working on their uh, projects. Uh, same also that's that's most easy part to rearrange a space uh, maybe not uh, completely change it from the classroom look but uh, rearranging uh, tables uh, were most w welcome from the kids because uh, usually as christian said uh, there is a teacher on one side and they are on opposite side so in these islands we are just moving they are moving around they work in the groups and that was some kind of benefit compared to the traditional uh, classroom. Uh, we are, of course, not able to, to change a whole uh, room, but we choose a uh, room uh, carefully. So we choose a uh, uh, classroom which is uh, devoted to the art. So uh, this classroom usually has a uh, painted uh, painted uh, walls with some some interesting uh, kids work on the walls. So it was not classic uh, classroom at all. But uh, more challenging was uh, try to make a complete uh, transfer of not transfer but working and co-working together with kids uh, in different way change uh, try to move them from their traditional uh, waiting and listening uh, stage when they are listening to the teachers to their more engaged uh, stage where they are participate participants in their uh, decision making and critical thinking and all the stuff so uh, we follow some procedure which we also developed for this uh, do it project using uh, project canvas uh, where we give opportunity to each kids to express their interest and their uh, idea uh, what to do which problem to to deal with and uh, how to work uh, with the group. Uh, so, so this was also not so uh, problematic how was to, uh, because we include also some of their teachers, 
uh, as a facilitator uh, how to make them uh, believe in uh, kids potential and uh, what they can do without their help and this this that, that was most challenging uh, how to make those teachers uh, very open and truthful to the to the to the to the kids and to their ideas and not to steer them to the direction of their opinion and so on so so this there was three levels space which is we done what we can do and uh, then uh, work with the kids it was not easy but much easier than with the adults who are have to change the whole mind and perspective of uh, how they are teaching those same kids uh, in some other time. So, so that that was three levels of uh, problems we are ta- tackled with. What kind of advice would you give to starting mentors who are on just about to start working with teachers and um, youth or children? So how we start is that we make a preparation uh, which include also uh, kids. Uh, so we include the teachers and kids in co-working preparation of actual pilot activities. So at this stage, um, we, we, we use this because we, uh, we have uh, kids with special needs, so we didn't know if we are capable to, to, to deal with this and, and is there any specific needs for, for them, how to work with them, did we include them, uh, if, they're, if, the, if we kept, keep them separately, if we include also other kids, uh, if we make uh, groups together, mixed or not, and so on. So, so, so uh, uh, my advice is, uh, as Christian said, teachers have to be on the level of the kids, not be superior, not not be in charge, and uh, give this uh, this leadership to the kids. And you are, uh, as a facilitator, as a teacher, you are just steering uh, if. If, if there is some real problem, but uh, but give them and trust to the kids uh, when they want to do something, uh, and and trust them they are capable to 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 start and finish with some solution. So work with them, not teach them, not not try to implement your opinion, but listen very carefully uh, for kids' opinion how to. Uh, solve some problem and uh, this is more most challenging for adults even for me also but i'm i'm trained by the years of experience but for 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 those uh, new teachers it's a little bit hard to to lose this uh, position of uh, person who knows everything and who has to answer on all kids questions so uh, this is something what uh, i will suggest that just listen to the kids and 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 work together and co-work together on the preparation of of a workshop or solving some problems or solving some projects yeah i, I agree with yeah. sorry i agree with roberto yeah it's uh, um, i work with uh, with facilitators that are from high school to I don't know, 50 years old, um, I would say. And the most problems that we get is from the older generation because they are already used to how they um, give knowledge, which is the traditional one, um, of course. Um, So it's the hardest thing is for them to listen to the kids and to let kids work and do stuff. And what's maybe also... um, um, point of our work, I always give... Um, our facilitators one kind of secret um, that when you're developing a workshop, if you cannot work with kids at that point to develop it together, think as a kid. Think if you're if you're working for ten year old kids, think about um, try to put yourself into their shoes and think about um, if it's going to be fun for them. Is it going to be boring? Is it going to be interesting or not? Is going is they're going to become creative because of your workshop that's going to think like that so this is maybe the the addition 
Yeah. Um, what, what have your experiences been with this approach? Uh, has there been any additional challenges you have had to overcome when taking these approaches or uh, have you uh, like um, after iterations have you been uh, overall really happy with the outcomes or do you feel is there still something you need to develop further well we have to constantly develop new stuff and we have to constantly um, evolve um, our attitude and uh, um, the things we do but um, I would say that we're doing pretty good job at the moment um, most issues that we had was with teachers um, when we have it on, on uh, in the school teach sometimes teachers are as well in the workshop but most of the time they're not because they're just okay it's free hour for me so I'm out um, we cannot force them, of course, to be on the workshop as well and, and to assist. But those that are in the beginning, they're a bit scared about what's going to happen. Um, because in the beginning, it looks like there's not going to be any order or anything. So they're really afraid. So we had always um, preparation with them as well, that how it's going to look, what we're going to do. But when they see it, they're always a bit scared. Um, so I think we have to work more with them, but we're getting in the autumn um, with this uh, additional project. Um, they're going to work more with uh, with teachers as well. All right. Uh, both of you have been involved in a lot of technology or maker maker movement. So has there been what are, what is your solution and what kind of challenges have you overcome when you are taking this? Um, Tech maker tools or technology into the classroom that might not have been previously equipped to handle those things. Yeah, for uh, for us, uh, we because we were on premises of the school, we have to bring and we usually go to the schools and uh, uh, bring our fab boxes, which are developed for for different purposes and workshops, uh, which include different uh, tools. Uh, which can be used on, on in school premises and uh, but uh, regarding do it project we were mm, not so extensively used some uh, uh, let's say it's 3d printers or, or, or CNC machines or something like that but we were more focused on the process and uh, usually uh, uh, that, that's my opinion, those are just the tools and uh, real change and real challenges in the, the changing the process of learning. So uh, prototyping, it's a great way. And uh, believe me, on each workshop, uh, kids just can't wait to go to this phase of prototyping. But we are also very carefully to to uh follow a whole proceed whole process of uh, design thinking so they are really a uh, challenge to 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 think about problem uh which is related to the either to the, the global uh, sustainability goals or to some uh, local uh, issues or maybe some some issues in the schools or some issues uh, between uh, kids in the schools uh, but they have to define the problem uh, they have to find what is the cause of this problem they then they have to think about how to solve this uh, uh, cause and how to solve this problem and then they are slowly come to the to the prototyping so uh, this is this first stage is really demanding and uh, just to add something what christian previously uh, said yeah uh, expectation and and uh, uh, teachers were re really afraid what kids will done uh, following this procedure. But after, especially on the first phase, uh, they were really surprised what uh, kids after 15, 20 hours of work can uh, develop as a project, which are have a very solid uh, uh, brainstorming, about the problem, about the cause, about the solutions, and how those can impact uh, and be implemented in the world, or in the school, or in the surroundings. 
and they built with those uh, tools uh, maybe some sometimes is a cutter maybe it's just a soldering machine or something like that uh, but uh, they develop a project so everything was done in not so many hours and they were usually very surprised uh, they were very skeptical in the second phase they were more trustful to us and and they they believe that we can do some interesting projects but this that was uh, something what uh, i want to add to, to to christian what he said it was they were really uh, first very afraid and then very surprised with the result after the workshop yeah i agree with you roberto in the end they're all very happy and very keen to, to 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 get the new ideas into the classroom as well yeah um yeah my experience maybe with the um um with this maker movement in the in the classrooms um at the moment as i know in uh, in this project we don't collaborate with 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 schools directly but we have a lot of experience with uh, um, with schools already because we are doing workshops for six or seven years now um, and uh, first thing that that teachers or anybody that is or um, organizing it is the cost because they see through the printers they see laser cutters they see everything that is huge that, that needs a lot of money or everybody should need their own iPad or whatever to, to build a robot which has to be bought and you have Lego, Lego robots and you have everything and everything is expensive of course. Um, but what we do um, as well at, at Kersniko Institute is to try to add this value of open source and open hardware as well. So there are, n n there are a lot of um, open source um, solutions or open hardware solutions, which are not that expensive as it would be some Lego constructions, which is also really, really good stuff, but some primary school in Slovenia cannot really afford probably the whole, the whole set for everybody. Um, so we try to show them that even in this maker movement or DIY bio movement, it depends which, which workshops, uh, we have that you can also with small budget you can you can give kids this space for creativity because what we also try to um, to start this art thinking where you cannot really show them hard how to think or that there is no process you just have to build the environment so it's um, so it gives kids this opportunity to be creative and with this you can do really low budget it's really and they're in the end they're really um, of course, I give them my my business card so we can communicate afterwards where do where they can get this because of course, in some village in Slovenia they cannot get I don't know Arduinos or you name it or whatever else um, we're building it. So we have them as well then with the uh, uh, with the tools and with material um, and with the uh, with help with the um, how to do the workshops and everything else. Maybe if I can add something. Uh for sure open uh, open community and open source and open resources are one way and we also use this but uh, we also as a part of uh, those uh, workshops especially with the do it with, with the global uh, sustainability uh, goals uh, we try to raise their awareness about resources around us and we also use and 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 before uh, actual, uh, actual uh, workshop we ask teachers and kids to bring uh, everything from their home which uh, they believe they will they want to throw it away as a waste or trash and uh, they they really collected some impressive uh, resources which we use in uh, the part of prototyping in uh, a prototyping phase in uh, do it uh, activities we of course add some sensors we uh, of course add some electronics and uh, bring some some tools uh, to to connect all this and some lamps and uh, power supplies and so on but uh, also some kids uh, bring some motors and and some some power from their old uh, toys or or those who are the, uh, not functioning anymore so it was also 
fun part to check if this motor actually is working or not but this is also part of the teaching so 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 this was very important part also for us uh, and also for, for teachers as christian said uh, it's not necessary that you have a lego sets or or whatever uh, organized set which are also uh, are promoted in the schools in in croatia probably in slovenia but you can use the resources around you and you can even do more with this because you raise awareness you raise awareness uh, uh, with the kids but also with their parents and they also think about resources uh, and this is i i believe also some secondary impact of of uh, our activities so we we were really emphasize this uh, let's say waste uh, usage and resource usage uh, as a part of of do it uh, activities so uh, our uh, and we will uh, apply some 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 projects on on uh, um, do it challenge so you can check that those are actually some trash parts or waste parts uh, put together to show a whole idea of the project so uh, what i think this is also very uh, very uh, inspirational for the facilitators for their teachers because uh actually in one school so we work with uh, two primary schools and one special uh, um, organization for kids with the special needs uh so in one school after first phase of do it uh, action they they actually build the styro cutter uh, from waste uh, one uh, grandfather put together some parts some wires give some power supply and this is also made from the waste so uh i think that's that's actually um, really practical uh result and impact of this uh, project at least in one school so but there is many uh, such uh, such uh, um, experience and and uh, something what we can uh, pr uh, demonstrate but i think this is very important besides uh, using open source which is for sure also using resources which is around you and especially for facilitators and to to make kids believe that they don't need to to put and and throw away something what they don't use but maybe find another way how to use it maybe to hack it maybe to to change the purpose of this uh, uh, toy or something so this is just to add something to the to christian Dope. so uh, thank you so much for attending and have a good afternoon yeah, thank you auntie for inviting us yeah thank you and see you maybe on some other webinar.